to find out how to win, but I don't like being in the dumbest position. Everybody complaining about the misery on earth right now is in the dumbest possible position. What's the dumbest position to be in? To be standing at the finish line, watching the whole race come to you, and all you got to do is turn around and then go to the finish line. That's the dumbest position to be in. Never knew that you were standing at the finish line. You already won the race. Why is you going to let a motherfucker run past you? You the champ. Just turn around and go get your shit. Too much like right. So, um, I had to write books, do lectures, all that shit. To show y'all where the problems, what y'all missed, what y'all didn't see. Teach y'all how to flip this shit, how to spiritually read what these motherfuckers done so this physical shit can't trap you no more. Show you your immortality. Because once your eyes become open and you can see all of your past lives, you have no doubt. You become biased at that point. Motherfucker can't tell you to believe shit about being here, being eternal. You already know it. You already know what it is to be an eternal being. And you already know that these misery games and shit is just that. Then the games of the gods. See, when the war on heaven landed on earth, it didn't stop nothing. It just changed the structure and the motion in which the river flowed. But it didn't take the river off course. The wise man seek to see with a goddamn fool chasing the bag. You chase your bag. I learned something when I was a little boy. My mama told me, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things should be added unto you. I'm looking for heaven. Well, fuck, I didn't know that heaven was between the legs of a woman. What the fuck is he talking about having between the legs of a woman? Look, portal of life. You can only come through that motherfucker one time. One time. But there's something that that woman got that y'all sleep on. It's called the Philosopher's Stone, the Elixir. I ain't gonna go into it. I'm just, the woman though. She ain't gonna tell your dumb ass. She gonna make you figure it out. I had to figure it out. That's how I know she ain't gonna tell your dumb ass. And all you nine vote ass niggas, y'all finna go run up in these 250,000 vote women. They gonna short your bitch ass out. They gonna short your ass out. So yesterday, when Umar, or a couple days ago, Umar flipped me. Nipsey, no. He flipped me Jay-Z and Meek Mill. Meek flipped me to the game to Nip. Jay-Z flipped me to Nip and Lauren London. Alright? So now I have to flip out of this zigzag zig in order to see who this queen is that's calling for me to flip this shit out. Well, I kind of did some of it yesterday on the Lauren London picture just to get an idea. Because I can't see it until I start flipping it. Once I start flipping it, I can see what it is, and then I can identify who's who and what's what. I listen to the Lauren London poem on the, uh, Forever Strong, and it was a message in there for me, so I flipped that shit out a little bit. Come to find out, it was a message from the Red Lodge about the balance, and so it flipped. She flipped it to me. So now they had me stuck in the middle again. Off the four corner shuffle. Now watch this. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Umar flipped me off the two ball king, Jay Z, and me. Right? From there, off the two ball king, Jay Z flipped me, uh, Lauren and Nip. But, um, me. Flip me the game and nip. So now, when I flipped it, I realized it was the zigzag zig on two sides. 
So you see Lauren London do this. Balance, motherfucker. Balance these goddamn scales. But it ain't just Lauren. It's two of them. That's why, that's why it's a double zigzag flip. So this is the hardest one to flip because the zigzags are two people. So now I could be looking for as many as 50 people in this bitch. I wouldn't know. When I get done doing the zigzag and flipping everybody out, knowing who's who and what's what, I was fucked up. Because they flipped me back my son. They flipped me back my son. They flipped me back my family. It's just been me. 50 years of struggles and it's just been me. And somewhere along the line, I get my family back. I ain't talking about my brothers and sisters. I'm talking about my family. My pyramid where I'm at the top. I'm the all C&I. I'm the motherfucking rock nation. You know? I'm the motherfucking G. It's five alive. Flipping the... Well, well, well. Uh, I'll do my invites. really don't have a main topic of discussion today. I had some anomalies happen, some strange occurrences, but poster went that way. So, um, <clears throat> today, um, I wanted to take some Q&A questions on the roles of the males or the men in the matriarchy because I did two videos last night, two hour lives, two one hour lives and um, the first one I was able to you know, just go over the structure get into it a little bit and then in the second one I didn't get any questions pertaining to the role of men in the matriarchy but one of the things about it is the men in the matriarchy have to be a lot more resilient and a lot stronger than these m m males now uh, who profess to be men for whatever reason. I don't fuck can't tell you. <clears throat> they do more girl shit than women. You know. And then they go hustle up more bullshit than a motherfucking gossiping ass motherfucking neighbor. So, um, they always got some shit to talk about, but they don't never got no real shit to talk about. Don't none of these motherfuckers know how to tell y'all about the structure of a matriarchy. They can't run a government. These motherfuckers can barely run their own lives. And then they want to come and tell y'all uh, all of a bunch of nonsense about somebody that's putting in the work. You can't, when somebody putting in the work and you tearing them down, um, that shit gonna come back to your ass. One way or another, motherfucking other. Because this shit too fucking hard. Um, it's too motherfucking arduous. Requires too much effort to accumulate the necessary amount of data in your brain network, your neural network. <clears throat> so, I mean, we as a collective, we got to start paying attention. Oh, Marcus Garvey, yeah. Um, so, I got two questions in here. Uh, having sex only to procreate. Um, no, I haven't touched on that. But sex is more than for procreation. Um, sex is also um, acceptance and bonding between two people. A lot of people now in this modern world think men are not supposed to pursue women anymore. Like, cut off your balls and call you gelded. 
Because they don't think that a man is supposed to approach a woman or say something to a woman that he find attractive. Now they trying to me too a motherfucker for um, letting a woman know that he interested. I'm like, what the fuck kind of shit is this? So in this new society, you motherfuckers better jack off. Um, uh, the sisters, how can sisters support getting the brothers to step up? Um, hold their ass accountable. Form your sister groups. Disregard what the fuck they doing. Nature will grab a hold of their ass and drag them where they need to be when the women doing their part. Yeah. So the um the um Marcus Garvey question. Marcus Garvey was the baddest motherfucker to me. What his his level of works in his era, Marcus Garvey registered five million United Negro Improvement Association members with no internet. He got no internet. This motherfucker don't, don't got no... Well, radio just getting started and there's no television. Only uh, some uh, rolling film footage from the era. He was able to successfully register 500 UNIA members on grassroots effort, pound the curb and beating the street. Garvey had put together something called the... Um, Black nurse, the Black Star Nurse Brigade, and they used to wear all white, and they used to march down the streets in Harlem, St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, and they used to have parades to show their unity, and they used to show, uh, bring attention to the community of what's taking, what this is what's going on on your land. If you watch us in the parade, you'll know what's going on on the land, but a lot of our grandparents wasn't fucking watching. They dropped the fucking ball. Bad. So now we got to come. They had to call the ancient ones to return. Because then nobody know how to fix this shit. Right? It's real simple. The easiest way to fix it is to put the power where it go. Because if you put the power where it go, the machine run the way it's supposed to run. And the motherfucker don't break down. Because it was designed to permanently run with efficiency. According to the laws of efficiency. The um, pack instinct of the human puts us in a uh, understanding pack nature, and then we acting like lone individuals. <sighs> Excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> you can't be a lone individual and endorse pack society. Pack society um, is in, in the human arena is predicated up on. The same principle as elephants and the same principle as lions. <clears throat> the only difference between a, hu a human clan and a lion clan is in the human clan, the men go out and hunt. The women used to be the hunter gatherers. They, I mean, they used to be the, uh, the, the gatherers, the farmer gatherers. And then they start recruiting the men to do the heavy lifting on the farm. And this is the birth of. In ancient times of uh, something called husbandry, to see they got people thinking that your husband is the man that live in the house with you, that your marriage certificate merged y'all two corporate entities together, and you think that that's married. That's not married. That's a business venture. This is why you. This is why most marriages need prenups because it's a business venture. <clears throat> You got two ways of doing business. The old handshake across the table manner of doing business. Or you got the modern sign the contract doing business. If you're doing business um, by contract, then you got terms. So getting married in this society, free Larry Hoover for sure. But Larry Hoover and um, Raven Rock. Taking care of business. Anyway, so. So, um, the corporate merger is a joinder of parties 
of two corporate entities. And the corporate entities then, if they don't have a prenuptial agreement, well, in contract, it's called um, a, uh, a glossary of terms. <clears throat> the glossary of terms tell you the conditions that each member have to uphold. Whew, shit, you're like a motherfucker for some reason. That's not normal. But it tells you what each member have to uphold and their responsibilities under the contract. This is why the women, the men only worry about their money under the contract. They're not worried about um, in the prenup it's, you list her wifely duties. If her wifely duties ain't mentioned in the prenup, she don't have to do none of that shit. But you're going to try to whoop her ass if she don't. Domestic violence. A hostage crisis decide, dis, di, disguised as a love affair. You know. Um, but Marcus Garvey, um, back to the, what I was saying about Garvey, off that marriage shit, because that's some traumatic shit. When y'all been thinking y'all been falling in love, getting married, y'all been falling in um, ignorance, joining corporations together, and y'all not even been in the corporate because the corporate asset is being um, divvied up and spread out among barristers and lords, landlords. And now the landlords who usurp the vice lords got to pay for that shit. It's big mama shit. So the vice lord clan going to make them landlords pay. And them landlords is motherfucking from Europe. And the landlords was the part of the royal family that took control of the territory, the physical property of the community in order to provide for the people. But when they corporatized everything, it wasn't about providing for the people anymore. The royal family go rogue. It's incorporated now. And now under the incorporation of the rogue entity, the, the landlords do not um, use the land for the benefit of the people but for the building up of their personal coffers. They're stacking all their money up. And then they're telling us that nationality is the order of the day. And don't now one of them really seem to understand that uh, in order to be a national, you have to be somebody's citizen somewhere. You can't be a national to a country and not be a citizen of that country. And all of these countries is incorporated under the queen. And by way of the Pope, the Pope gave her the jurisdiction to exercise what is called in law, I mean, called in the papacy, the white man's burden. Um, the white man burden um, was codified in a poem by a guy named Rudyard Kipling, who uh, breaks down exactly what the white man burden is. But the problem is that they got you thinking that the white man is like pale skinned people. That's not what the white man is. The white man is a free white person in law that just so happened to be a man. So that's where you get your white man from, a status, a legal status, just like black. And they say black, according to science, means death. But that don't make sense because everything proceed and come forth from the black. We called it the primordial abyss or um, the noon, the N-U-N. And they got y'all thinking them nuns, and they actually civil priestesses, and they've been hijacked. So these priests have been raping them. You know, that's what they do. That's part of one of their rituals. And so they made a bunch of orphans, so then they created orphanages to ship all of the children that they was making all around the world. So your nuns is the priest that's the belongs to the men of the diocese, and only certain men is allowed to copulate. You know, so a pope can have his way with any of them if he wasn't a full-blown homo testicle. Can't say certain words, so I can improvise on the word. But the pope only interested in little boys. That's part of his prerequisite for his position is that he had already been, been um, known to molest boys. That's when you look over in Rome and you see all them statues of the Moors with the little boys holding on to their gown. And then they changed them and made them into pale people. 
when the pale people kick their ass out, they double back on their ass because they were slicker than Greece. So now they all in Switzerland. Well, well, they was in Switzerland, hiding out, financing all of the wars on both sides. Yep, the Sybils. Yep, those girls wasn't no joke. And you know, from from the teachings of the Sybils is where the Candace Queens and um, those other warrior queen tribes from the Middle Eastern region, where all they come from, they all was pretty much like um, splinter groups from the Sybils. The Sybils was disrupted. Let me tell you all the story of the Sybils. This is what happened to the Sybil priests. When they came here, the Sybil priestesses was the um, wives of the Pharaoh. And they were, I mean, they didn't just sit around and put on makeup all day. They did shit. 